Hi everyone, my name is Xin Wei Fang. Today I'm presenting our recent work on fast parametric model checking through fragmentation, FPMC for short. Probabilistic model checking is an important technique that can formally verify quantitative properties of a probabilistic model. It can be used to capture key aspects of a real-world system, analysis property of interest, or support decision-making in autonomous systems. When the probabilities of a model are unknown, they can be replaced by the parameters, and we call such model as a parametric model. Checking such model are referred to as a parametric model checking. We can also verify different quantitative properties using this model, such as asking what is the probability of reaching states off of, or what will be the reward value when reaching the final states done. Those properties are often specified in PCTL. We then pass the model and PCTL to PMC. It will return the expressions as shown on the right. The underlining of this process are automated by the existing model checkers, such as Param, Prism, and Storm. Those obtained algebraic expression are very useful. For example, they are reusable, and we can perform different analysis based on such expressions. However, PMC have not been widely used in real practice due to its scalability issue. For example, the current PMC failed to produce the expressions for a relatively small model, such as this one shown here. For a simpler model, it may be able to retain the expressions, but the expression can be very long and complex, which may not be practical to process at runtime. To give you an expression, this screenshot shows a small part of the result returned by Storm for the model with only 17 states and 17 parameters. The returned expression has more than 35,000 operations. In this work, we present an automated fragmentation method to aid PMC and to extend its applicability. For example, assuming that we want to check the probability to reach the final states as 14 in this parametric model, if the existing PMC fail to handle due to its size, then we can break down this model into a number of smaller ones so that the existing PMC can handle, and we combine the expressions obtained from each smaller model to construct the final result. We call such a smaller model as a fragment, as shaded in gray. Once we obtain a fragment, we pass this fragment with the associated property to existing PMC to obtain the expressions. This obtained fragment expression will be used to update the transition probability of the original model. For example, in the original model, we replace the first fragment 1 with a single state and update its outgoing transition probabilities that are highlighted in red using a fragment expressions that we obtained from the last slide. So we have done the fragmentation of the first fragment. We just need to find the rest of the fragment in the model until no more fragments are available. In this example, we need to find fragment 2 and 3. We now replace each fragment with a single state and update the transition probabilities. Now the original model becomes a model with much less states, as look like this one. We call this model as an abstract model. We then pass this abstract model along with the original PCTL property to the existing PMC. It will again return an expression, which is called the abstract expression. Figure on the left shows the workflow of the FPMC. The obtained fragment expression together with the abstract expression are the output of the FPMC. It is equivalent to a single a complex expression generated by existing PMC. The theoretical foundation of using fragmentation in PMC was proposed in our previous work. In contrast to that work, FPMC does not require any domain knowledge in the fragmentation process, and therefore it extends the applicability of PMC significantly. All states in a valid fragment need to be as one of three types of states defined here as input states, mid states, and output state. The success of FPMC depends not only on whether fragments can be successfully formed, but also on the size of the fragments. A fragment being too small will result a large abstract model that may not be handled by existing PMC. A fragment being too large is opposite, as the PMC may not handle the big fragment.
Based on our experience, the success of FPMC was often due to a fragment being too large, and the reason for that was due to unsuccessfully finding valid output states for the fragment. There are three conditions where the formation of a fragment cannot be completed at the point. Condition one is the state has incoming transition from outside of the fragment. Condition two is the state has outgoing transitions to inside of the fragment. And a third condition has both issues with the incoming transition from outside and outgoing transition to the inside. In order to aid a fragment to be formed in an appropriate size, we introduce a mechanism that addresses such issues. For the first condition, we modify the incoming transition by bypassing the states S3 to states S4 directly. In this case, S3 is no longer having incoming transitions from outside, and therefore S3 can be a valid output state, and the fragment can be completed. For the second condition, we introduce an auxiliary state S prime three between S three and S four. In this case, the auxiliary states can be a valid output state of the fragment. Again, the valid fragment can be formed between S three and S four, which was previously impossible. Uh, for the third condition, we don't have a good solution to complete the fragment at the point, so we have to allow the fragment to continue to grow until previous conditions 1 or 2 are met. In FPMC, we introduce a hyperparameter alpha to control when the model reconstructing mechanism will be triggered. It is worth to point out that due to the third condition that we explained in the previous slide, the alpha only provides a soft upper bound for the size of the fragment. And the FPMC results are also sensitive to the selection of this alpha as shown in the figure on the right. Our evaluation of FPMC was performed on models used in existing literature and from three application domains. There were 26 model variants tested, with the simplest model being just 11 states and with the most complex model with 115 states. Our evaluation compared FPMC with two most advanced parametric model checkers, PRISM and STORM respectively, in terms of their time and the size of the obtained expressions. Uh, we use this model to give you an expression how FPMC is working in real practice. For this model, both PRISM and STORM failed to return the expressions within 6 minutes time frame, but FPMC managed to return all expressions within 6 seconds. The states grouped in different colors in the figure on the bottom left represent different fragments formed during the process, which has 13 fragments in total. In this evaluation, we compared FPMC with prison and storm in terms of time spending on obtaining expressions and their sizes. Here shows the results from using foreign exchange model. Each row stands for a unique DTMC structure, and it has 21 of them. Looking at a FPMC, it managed to return all the expressions. Except for one, all results were returned within 300 seconds. FPMC 1 alpha equals to infinity means the mechanism for the early formation of the fragment was not invoked. We can see it failed to check 7 models out of 21. This indicates the early formation mechanism that we introduced is helping the fragmentation. When compared the storm in green and prison in yellow, we can see the FPMC extended the applicability of existing PMC significantly. When compare the size of obtained expression, we can see those from FPMC are several orders less than those from prison and storm. Furthermore, in some of cases, we also observe that FPMC with early formation mechanism returns smaller expressions than those without. Uh, due to the time limitation, we can only show a fraction of our evaluation here. So to conclude this presentation, to the best of our knowledge, FPMC is the first toolkit that can check larger and more complex models by automatically partitioning the model into a number of fragments. We also introduced a new mechanism that enables early formation of the fragment, and it can enhance the performance of model fragmentation. Our evaluation suggests 
that a PMC can extend the applicability of existing PMC significantly. For the future work, we are extending FPMC to support more PCTL properties such as rewards and unbounded until. Hello everyone again. We are uh, here with the authors of the trace checking CPS properties paper. Okay. And as, uh, uh, as, as usual in this Q&A sessions, we are waiting for your questions. All right. In the meantime, while you are uh, making your own questions through the chat, okay, simply uh, um, type directly or use the uh, question mark icon, which appears in the bottom left side of the chat pane, uh, so that we will see the question more clearly. We are going to start the conversation. So, well, we warm up a little bit the, the Q&A. Okay, uh, looking at my notes because it's uh, it's three papers in a row. Okay, I remember perfectly. It's 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 a, a pretty interesting research. Uh, it's a pretty interesting research, the one that you have presented, because uh, it looks like at the end you. Uh, I, tools like a storm or a prism to get the, uh, the, the expressions, the, the probability expressions uh, uh, that represent this, this um, probabilistic model checks, or these probabilistic models. But uh, it looks like that your approach, although you have presented it in terms of fragments, which looks like, okay, I'm going to mm, take this piece, take this piece, take this piece, and going to simplify it. It sounds like it can be applied again to the simplified model. So it's kind of recursive. Uh, I don't know if you have thought about uh, getting rid of uh, store, pressing on those tools and reduce the model until you get just one single state or something like that, in which the inputs and outputs will be the complete formula. Have you have to think about, I don't know, going one step uh, uh, further ahead and uh, make it uh, autonomous? Yeah, um, thanks for your question. Uh, I believe, yeah, um, we thought the same when we developed this. Uh, it could be recursive. So when we break a large uh, model into a number of fragments, then we have a high tier model called abstract model. Then we can further, of course, can further break down that abstract model into the smaller ones. But the problem is um, we cannot guarantee the size of each fragment due to the algorithm limitations. So we cannot break a large model into a appropriate size that we would like to. We only can set a range and tell the method, say, we we think it's appropriate now. We start to uh, introduce actual mechanism to help to form the appropriate a smaller model. but uh, we cannot guarantee that. So in that case, we cannot say we can control exactly how big each uh, models are and how they are connected. So we do not have such ability to control that. But we definitely can do the iterations um, to extend the current applicability to more larger and complex models. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned size very, very frequently because I understand that the science size is a fundamental limitation. Uh, actually, you explained very well in your in your case study what happens with uh, I think it was a storm when trying to 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 compute that not very complex model. But it, is it size fundamental or is it uh, the let's say topology? of the of the state model that is the inputs and outputs because it looked at the problem is more related to how the model is organized than the size itself i don't know maybe i am mistaken yeah there actually are multiple uh, are interrelated uh, not only size itself but also number of the uh, parameters involved in actual transitions and how the transition are interconnected so the states are connected if they have very complex loops inside of the uh, fragment then it may get harder to break down so it's related there is we haven't figured out what exactly are related to that or what's the weight between them 
Well, mm -hmm. our feeling is, in general, um, the larger states and larger number of parameters and more transitions are leading to uh, a model harder to be uh, checked. I, I understand that loops may be complicated, but um, probably I am I am I'm missing the point. I mean, um, that's not my area. But I imagine that for many practical applications, loop uh, loops could be. Um, I don't know if it's a word flatten. That is, you can decompose a loop into like a series of uh, linear transitions, and maybe this is enough for 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 verifying many interesting programs. Is it a possibility, or have you thought about uh, simplifications or, or or ways to solve this hard problem, which is the 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 impossibility of creating uh, analyzing those complex fragments with loops and other conditions? Um, currently, no, because this particular method does not require any domain knowledge. So we uh -huh. would not know where the loop is from and what, whether a certain loop represents a certain functionalities. So we only look at the uh, graphical perspective, so how the graphical connected. And it depends on where we start to our using method, where the start point. So it's like a search point. If you have a different start point, you will end up with a different result, slightly different ones. And we haven't had chance to test whether a different starting point do make significant difference in terms of the results. Um, so the short question is, um, there's still lots of things to look at, and uh, we couldn't have a solid answer for whether we can make a fragment just uh, looking at a particular a loop associate or a functional associated state. Yeah. And from your perspective, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and from your perspective, what what is what is better? I mean, your perspective. I mean, your research perspective. A general method that do, does not require uh, domain knowledge and solve, but, but it's only able to solve maybe a limited set of problems. Or if you add domain knowledge or you add uh, some other uh, ingredient in the recipe, in the recipe, uh, and it may uh, help to 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 address more complex uh, more complex um, programs with bigger domain, bigger models, etc. What, what 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 would you like to do? I mean, go for the mathematical or go for the more practical branches mm -hmm. of the problem? Sh shall I answer yeah. this question, mm -hmm. uh, Genoa? Yeah. So I'll try to answer this question. I think the uh, generic method has the advantage, obviously, that it works all the time, but it might be slightly suboptimal if you uh, embed domain knowledge into your solution. You will be able to provide uh, um, smaller um, expressions and better results. But then it will only work for a specific domain. So if you are prepared to put in the extra work, the theoretical foundation we came up with allows you to do that. In this precise paper, we focus on the general approach. And we have a previous uh, paper published in uh, uh, Transactions in Software Engineering, where we uh, also discuss how domain knowledge can be exploited to obtain a uh, more optimal result. But, and, but that and, is limited to the domain. And is it a bi is there a big difference when you introduce domain knowledge and well you try to solve a practical problem versus the theoretical approach that is that is domain independent? Uh, we, we did not find such a big difference in terms of efficiency size of the expressions, but with domain knowledge, what you do gain is that the expressions are. Uh, confined to specific components of the system, which is quite nice. So you have an expression that might be the uh, reliability of a, a part of your system, whereas uh, what we generate automatically could be a half of one component and a quarter of another component. They are grouped together. So you have less explainability, for instance, yeah, if your understand. results are not... Uh, under stability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the stability for the user, I understand perfectly. Yeah. Well, so um, I encourage the, the the public, the attendees, that uh, we have because I am 
and seeing you guys to uh, make questions. Right now we are 20 seconds uh, to finish, so uh, we will not admit more questions, but I encourage you to join the authors in the discussion room that will open immediately after this Q&A finishes. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, Oscar, for the Thank nice you. questions, and we'll join the discussion room for further questions. I will be there. <laughs>